Hi there, I'm KJ Foster and this is Fostering Resilience. In today's video, I'm sharing information with you about relapse and specifically how the way in which we respond to a relapse can actually make the difference as to whether that winds up being a full-blown relapse or maybe just is able to be limited to what's commonly referred to as a lapse. So let me start by explaining the difference between a lapse and a relapse in case you're not familiar. A lapse is generally a return, a brief return to use. So maybe you go out and you use uh, what had been your drug of choice um, or your family member for that matter. Uh, I'm referring to, of course, alcohol and or other drugs. That's what my channel is all about. It's dedicated to helping the recovering community, individuals and their family members. So it's a brief return to use. And typically the individual will be able to get back on track relatively quickly. They'll either be able to get back on track on their own or through the encouragement of friends, support group, family members. Whereas a full-blown relapse is a return to the addictive behavior. And generally when it's a full-blown relapse, there's going to have to be some sort of intervention or consequence that occurs in order to get that person back on track again. So the way in which we, and when I say we, I mean the individual themselves or the family member or other loved ones, the way in which we respond to the experience of the relapse can absolutely make the difference as to which way that goes. So let me explain what I mean by that. So if you are the individual that experiences the lapse initially, right, the return to, to use, the way in which you respond to yourself is going to impact whether that then goes into a full-blown relapse. And so I'll give you some examples. So what is common is that if you've had a period of sobriety, right, depending upon the length of sobriety, I don't think it really matters whether you've had 30 days or three years, when you have a relapse, I think it's common in, because I've experienced it myself, to think to yourself, oh, I messed up, I drank, for me it was alcohol, so I picked up, I drank, I might as well make this worth my while, right? So you know, I've lost all this time, and so why not just continue to keep going? You know, maybe uh, there's, there's embarrassment, there's shame, you don't wanna tell your family members, maybe you think to yourself that you'll be able to hide it. Whatever it is, you're telling yourself something inside your head along the lines of, I blew it, so I might as well just keep going. So that's a common response by the individual. And another common response is to be super self-critical and shame ourselves in our own minds. Like, I'm, I'm a failure, you know, I, I failed at this. Meanwhile, relapse is not failure by any means whatsoever. Because think of it this way, it, a substance use disorder, anyone who is experiencing a substance use disorder, relapse is a part of the, the process. Re and I know pe people have said relapse does not have to be a part of your story. And that's true. Yet, I want you to just consider something. So if you are able to stop drinking and or drugging and not experience a relapse, then I question whether that is truly an addiction or not, right? It, and I'm not talking about the binge drinker because binge drinkers can absolutely stop for long periods of time, but generally when they pick up a substance, they drink, um, they will just bombard their brain. They will drink and drink and drink and drink until blackout or until you know they uh, pass out. So not necessarily um, the, the binge drinker because they'll be able to stop. But really, when you're experiencing an addiction, it's the inability to stop, right? So there's going to be a period of relapse. It's just to be expected. And to think that you wouldn't experience a relapse is really illogical. So I want you to just consider something for a moment. Consider if you've ever been on a diet because I think everybody in their lives has attempted a diet at one point in time. And I can tell you for me, I've been on many diets, that my biggest downfall when I'm on a diet is sugar. And I'll go to work 
and the, somebody will have brought donuts. A marketer will have brought you know this amazing box of donuts. And when I'm, when I'm able to resist the donuts, I feel really proud of myself. But there have been many times where I have not been able to resist those donuts and I've blown my diet. And what typically happens when I blow my diet with the donut is, oh, I totally blew my diet. I might as well just go ahead and you know, go back to eating all of those bad things that I'm trying to resist. Think about how hard it is to do that, right? It, well, so take that example and magnify it by a thousand percent because the way that alcohol and other drugs impact the brain makes it very, very difficult to just be able to stop. So that's something that I think is really important to understand. So I gave you some examples of how, as the individual, we'll typically respond to the experience and make it worse for ourselves rather than just being gentle and kind and acknowledging that this is a difficult process and a lot of people have experienced this and being able to just get right back on track again and sharing it with somebody, not being afraid to tell someone someone that you know is going to be compassionate towards you because sometimes we'll tell somebody and this is where loved ones family members come into the equation and can actually make it worse rather than making it better because we'll tell someone a friend or a family member and depending upon how they respond can actually help the individual to get back on track or it can make it worse and these are examples of how as a family member or other loved one, you can make it worse. So if we respond to our loved one harshly, critically, um, if we shame our loved one, if we condemn them, if we um, are contemptuous towards them by saying things like, I can't believe you, you messed up, and, or you're not trying hard enough, or why can't you just have enough willpower, or why can't you just stop, or, or making it about yourself and saying, I can't believe you've, you've done this to me, I can't believe you're doing this to me. All of those responses are going to make your loved ones uh, relapse worse, uh, have the potential. They're absolutely going to make it more difficult for your loved one, make it harder on them. And it's like, in my opinion, you're feeding their addiction a steak on a platter. Here you go. And so what I'll have family members say is, but, you know, uh, I can't help the way I feel. And that is absolutely true. And, and you have a right to feel your feelings. If you're the individual experiencing the relapse, if you're the family member, to feel disappointed, to feel fearful, to be angry, those are all normal feelings to have. It's what we do, it's how we communicate the feelings that makes all the difference in the world. And this is where learning healthy communication skills, I have a video on that, by the way, that you can check out, learning how to communicate in a healthy way, in a way that is not going to add to your loved one's addiction. And this is why as the family member, it's so important for you to have your own support group, to have your own your own mentor, um, a person who's guiding you, to have um, you know somebody that you can go and share those feelings with of anger, disappointment, even resentment, and help them to guide you in ways to effectively uh, communicate and be supportive so that you're not making matters worse. And, and so I'm going to give you an example of how I used to be prior to my own, um, my own recovery process and the way in which I used to respond to my loved one's relapse and the way that um, I learned how to effectively respond to it to make it um, more of a lapse. And so when my loved one, when my son was first struggling with relapse, I was newly, newly sober. So he didn't, he didn't get sober until I was 14 months sober myself. And so we were both kind of on this parallel path. And what I used to do before I learned how detrimental it was is when he would relapse or when he was struggling to initially get sober and he couldn't seem to, you know, put together more than like 30 days or 60 days, 
I would get frustrated and I would express that to him in ways that were super unhealthy, like making it about myself, saying, I can't believe you're doing this to me and why can't you just get it? You know, or you're not working hard enough or you know, you're not going to enough meetings, saying things like that that are super, super detrimental. And um, I learned over the years that, that those types of responses, the way in which I was responding to his relapses, were making it worse. So he did um, put together a, a long period of sobriety from the time he was 19 for about six or seven years. And then he experienced a couple of relapses. And the way in which I responded to those relapses was completely different much more supportive and encouraging and you know expressing my fear in a very healthy way like I, I love you and you know I don't want to see you uh, doing this to yourself you know compassionately like understanding that he's suffering and this is what I think family members lose sight of they lose sight of they make it about themselves and they lose sight of the fact that your loved one is suffering they don't want to be in the position that they're in so coming um, coming to him and approaching him from a very compassionate place and an encouraging place and saying things like you know what can I do to help and I know that you can get back on track and you know do we need to look at treatment centers like being collaborative and and solution focused instead of blaming and shaming and condemning and criticizing those are things that are only going to make the addiction more powerful so choose compassion over condemnation because that one change could be the thing that changes everything. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this video to be helpful, please give me a thumbs up and also share it with anybody you think may benefit. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, definitely click on the red subscribe now button when the bell pops up. If you click on that bell, you will be alerted to all of my upcoming videos. I post videos every Monday. So until next time, have a very beautiful and a blessed week. Namaste.